you for that introduction, Lauren. That was great. Um, um, as Lauren just said, um, I'm Rachel. I'm from the Scottish Book Trust. Um, I'm one of the school communities managers there, and we're going to be having a session today on reigniting your child's reading. Um, so this session is aimed at families and children in upper primary, so kind of age nine to eleven. Um, but we hope that you'll be able to take away some ideas that will be suitable for um, other children too. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen just now. Okay, so, um, as I said, thank you for joining us all today, um, everyone. And uh, this is going to be a session on reigniting your child's reading. So, um, a little bit about Scottish Book Trust first. Um, we are an independent national charity that promotes reading and writing to all ages and stages across Scotland. Um, we run programmes for everyone, from babies to adults, and we aim to chill change lives through reading and writing um, for everyone across Scotland, no matter what their background, um, and ensure they have equal access to books as well. You might be familiar with some of our national programmes already, um, if you've worked with us before, such as Book Week Scotland and Bookbug, but we also run a schools programme which is full of opportunities for five to 16 year olds um, and includes events, activities and resources for families as well. We run the First Minister's Reading Challenge, bring authors to schools through the Scottish Friendly Children's Book Tour, broadcast author events with BBC Authors Live and gift bags of books and materials to every P1, 2 and 3 child um, as part of the Read Right Count campaign. So whether your child is a keen or reluctant reader, we're going to share some tips today to reignite your child's reading. They may have experienced them um, a little bit of a tail off in their reading during lockdown and school closures. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to help with that and have some book recommendations and ideas that you can use as a family. Um, if you have children aged 9 to 11, kind of upper primary age range, you may have found that they've experienced a drop in the reading during lockdown um, or have struggled to find books that will interest them. Um, and it's difficult to know which books to point them towards when they're maybe more interested in other hobbies at this stage um, or they're feeling anxious about the return to school. Um, so we hope that today we'll be able to give you some tips and recommendations on some titles that will interest your child and also some great practical and digital activities as well. We can have a wee focus on digital resources that you can get involved with to reignite your child's engagement with reading. So as I just mentioned, today's se session will include um, some practical tips and book recommendations for families, uh, some digital activities and ideas for families to take part in that are really great for promoting reading at home, where you can access support and online resources on the Scottish Book Trust website, and there'll be some time for questions at the end. But as Lauren said, if you have any questions at all over the course of the session, please feel free to put them in the chat and um, would also encourage you to share any ideas or your thoughts in the chat too um, as we go. So why is reading for pleasure so important? Why, why are we here today chatting about reading? We know that reading is a key skill for children and young people and it's central to their learning but reading for pleasure has its own benefits and um, which we'd like to highlight to you just now. Research shows that pupils who read for pleasure are more likely to do better in school and um, even in subjects like maths and the sciences and they're more empathetic to the world around them. Reading for pleasure is also a proven way of reducing stress and improving the health and well-being of our pupils, which we know is so important, especially in the current circumstances. New research has shown that reading has also provided vital support for children during the pandemic too, and that can really help support children in preparing for the return to school as well. So all of this is really important and can be great, uh, a great reason to make time for reading, but just as important or maybe more so um, is the way that reading can make children feel it's fun and exciting, it sparks their curiosity, it takes them on journeys to other places we really imagined and it opens up the world to them in a different way for each book that they read. And as parents, you can help introduce these, uh, these worlds to your children and share them together, share these stories and journeys together. So first of all, I um, quite like to do a wee icebreaker at the start of these sessions just to get people chatting um, and hearing from, from them as well. So um, I'd like to take the opportunity to invite you to let me know some of the, what, what books do you and your child enjoy and are there particular favourites at home. Um, please feel free to answer these questions in the chat and share with us if there are any particular books that you and your child enjoy together or ones that maybe you enjoy particularly or your child enjoys particularly. Um, maybe you have a book that's always requested or they really love being read aloud or one that they heard about at school that they, um, has kind of become a favourite of theirs. Please let us know in the chat. 
Um, and also we'd be interested to hear if you or your child read for pleasure. Um, do you just make time for reading at home because you really enjoy it? Um, is it part of your daily read routine at home? Do you read before bed? Um, do, you, do you take the time to read um, every day? Uh, it would be lovely to know that, um, just especially, especially in the current circumstances. I know people have either felt a tail off in their reading, like some people haven't been able to concentrate at all. I know I was, I was the same at the start of lockdown, I couldn't concentrate on reading at all, which for, <laughs> which for me might be a sackable offence. Um, but it's just, it's just the nature of things at the moment. Um, also, uh, you might find that you've gone, you've kind of been more, found reading more appealing in the current circumstances because it's been quite relaxing for you. Um, just let us know in the chat. Um, and as I say, yeah, it's not necessarily a bad thing to not have been reading recently. It's quite a been a difficult time, so um, it's good to know what what people's um, experiences with reading have been recently. And you don't necessarily have to read a book, every book your child chooses to read, um, but it's important to take an interest in their reading journey. Um, so if your child does like a book particularly, um, you could ask them about what they're reading and why they like it. What they think is going to happen next, things like that. Um, so even if you don't read books together uh, anymore, um, you can still take part in in their reading journey still. And what are they are in, what you are interested in their reading will be will make it more interesting for them, and they'll be more likely to share things about their reading journey with you. Ah, uh, someone's just said the uh, Harry Potter, but more my husband reading to my nine year old. Yeah. Yeah, I remember my brother when when we were younger. He he had the Harry Potter series read to him as well, and absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved being read aloud to, even when he was you know ten, eleven, um, upper primary age. I think it's really important to remember that kids do still love being read aloud to, even if they can read independently. And someone else has said they've revisited Philip Pullman's Dark Material series. That was my favourite series. As <laughs> I always I always say this to people. It was my favourite series when. Um, I was younger. Um, I got a bit excited when they, they brought out that TV series on, on BBC recently. Um, but far too excited for it. <laughs> but it just shows you, like, you remember the books that kind of resonated with you when you were a child, um, even, in, even in adulthood as well. And there's lots of, like, we, we were just mentioning there, but, you know, kind of sharing what you're reading or what your child what your child's reading with each other um you can also encourage them to when you're having those conversations as well just to have write wee short reviews of their books if they wanted to share that with a family member um or they could put it on a little bookmark and keep it with the book um for the next person to read in their in their household um but that also gives other people a sense of what they really liked about it as well so it's really nice for children to share what they enjoy about a book, like a particular, you know, particularly like Harry Potter or His Dark Materials, what is it they like about it? Um, get them talking about what they enjoy um, rather than them just saying, oh, I really liked it. Um, or I really didn't like it as well. If there's something they particularly didn't like, why did they not like it? Um, and it doesn't need to be complicated and be really, really short. Um, you just say what or who they liked and why they would recommend it if there was a particular character they liked. Um, it's just all really great to spark in those conversations about reading. Um, which is really important. Okay, thank you for sharing your thoughts in chat. If you um, want to, if you're in the middle of typing something, please feel free to uh, send it anyway. Um, as we go on to the next slide, I'm just going to be giving you some general recommendations. So please do, if you see any books that you think you quite like the look of, or um, ones that you've come across before, or your child has enjoyed, um, please do please do let us know in the chat. We'd love to we'd love to hear your thoughts. So if your child has experienced a tail off in their reading, um, or become a little bit disinterested by reading recently, which kind of generally happens at this kind of age, um, talk to them about it and find out why. I've just mentioned there about how sparking those conversations about reading. It seems really simple just to say what what why or you know have you have you not enjoyed books recently? But it's really helpful. Um, for you to decide what approach to take um, as a parent. So if your child is a confident reader, then it's maybe possible that they just haven't liked the books they've read over the last wee while, um, and they've just become a little bit disinterested in it. If they're lacking confidence, they might just need some quick reads to boost their reading self-esteem and their confidence, and once they've done that, they'll be, they'll be well on their way. And bridge books can be a really good approach to take if this is what you're thinking about, if you're wanting some quick, uh, quick reads. Um, 
generally bridge books um, are titles which are a bit longer than general picture books um, but with simple text um, and they're generally aimed at emerging readers so these are great because they're not they're a little bit more complex than uh, picture books but they aren't quite ready for full-length chapter books so you know chapter books can be quite text heavy these are great um, so they usually include illustrations um, and really simple text and we have the kind of younger reader in mind um, with these and the, there's a growing mark of them I mean there's Tom Palmer's there on the slide um, which is great um, story about uh, football um, during World War One in the trenches and things um, so it links in with maybe topics that they're doing at school as well um, so that's that's a quite a good outlet for them um, and Barrington Stokes Little Gem series has a variety of quick reads too I really recommend you uh, looking at those if you're looking for some quick reads um, and they're all published with illustrations and in a really accessible format for children too. Uh, another example, which is uh, football related, but a little bit different to Tom Palmer's, is um, The Unlucky Eleven by Phil Errol, um, which is about a school football team that uh, gets cursed. <laughs> so those are ideal for engaging um, children who are maybe interested in football, um, but they're quite quick reads as well. So they'll feel quite good when they get to the end of them quite quickly. So when you're thinking about selecting one of the book, these books for your child, Based on their interests, again, it probably seems quite simple. Um, I've just you know, highlighted a couple of football related ones there, but um, also link in with TV and film and games that they might like too, if they quite like playing games or they quite like certain movies, try and link it in with those as well. Um, there's books for all sorts of topics, even the likes of Minecraft and Fortnite nowadays. So um, <laughs> if your child is keen on those, then um, there's books, to, books even to appeal to them. And if they enjoy a particular storyline from a particular film or a game as well, then you can explore books that might be similar. Um, and don't be fussy about read what they read as well. That's a big, big thing, uh, really important. Reading is a habit, and as long as they're in the habit of picking up something to read, it doesn't really matter what it is, as long as they're enjoying it and they're getting into the habit of it. So even if they're reading magazines or something similar, that's really, really great, because um, that can lead to further reading if, they can establish, if you can establish what they're interested in. And also remember that they need to see reading as a fun thing to do as well. They don't want to see it as like an extra like a schoolwork or a chore or anything else. Um, and don't worry if you feel that their personal reading isn't challenging enough for them as well. That's really important because I feel, if, you know, we, we feel like we need to always be pushing our children and making sure that they're stimulated and challenging themselves. But if they're enjoying something that they're reading and you maybe think, oh, it's maybe a little bit young for them or maybe you think they might be onto something a bit more challenging, don't worry. Um, Leave them to it. Um, it'll be, it's a really, really good way of them associating reading with fun and pleasure. So if they're enjoying that, then that's the main thing. And it'll lead them on to more challenging books quite naturally. Also, if your child sees you reading as well, that's an, another big point um, I should mention. Um, that lets them know that finding, you find reading enjoyable as well, um, and that's worthwhile. And it also helps to spark conversations about what you're reading. Um, so that means you can have really meaningful back and forth conversations about reading, um, which is really, really important. And it's not guaranteed to get children reading, but it does send the right message, um, which is always really, really good. Um, and if you're reading something that you think your child might enjoy, um, leave it for them to have a wee flick through. Um, you know, you could do something similar to what we mentioned earlier, like a wee bookmark or something, or just a wee, um, let them know what you, what you liked about it, or say, well, this character in this book, I love them. And it'll just kind of spark their curiosity and go, oh, okay, I'll have a wee look at that. Um, it's just about making all of those meaningful connections. So here on the slide, we've got some recently published books, which are all aimed at eight to 11 year olds. Um, they're all very different. You can probably tell from the book covers that they all look quite different, but they are um, a variety of texts. Um, just to get, this just to show you the types of selections that you can, you can get for um, upper primary age children. And there's a wealth of choice in these books that will suit every reader, whether they're confident or a bit more reluctant. Um, so I wanted to highlight these ones to you especially because these are all quite recent, these books. Um, so you might have come across them before. Let me know in the chat if, if you've seen any of these books before, if you've seen them in a library or a bookshop, um, if, you've, if your child has come across them and really enjoyed them, um, that would be great to know. So I'll just give you a wee overview of each one just because I think they're really good to highlight um, for uh, if, you're, if you're wanting to reignite your child's reading. These, there's, some of these books are fantastic. So we've got A Kind of Spark by Ellie McNichol. This is quite a new book. Um, and it tells the story of a neurodivergent girl who is campaigning for a memorial in memory of the witch trials that took place in her Scottish hometown. So it's set in Scotland as well, which is always good. I think Ellie herself is Scottish too. So the girl knows that there's more to these stories, more to these story, more to the story of these witches, just like there is more to hers. Um, and can she 
encourage people to, in her time to see her for herself or will they see her autism um, instead? So it's about an autistic girl as well, which is um, really interesting to um, don't get many protagonists um, when it's like kind of explicitly mentioned. So um, that's really, really good, really good book to, to highlight. Um, also High Rise Mystery by Sharna Jackson. This just won the, one of the Waterstones prizes uh, for children's books this year. So it's, it's brilliant. It's a kind of mystery series um, for children, for, but kind of for the modern day. And it's about Nick and Norva who are investigating a murder in their try, which is their high rise home in London. Um, and it's really good. The dialogue between the two of them and the dynamic is great. It's uh, uh, yeah, as I say, a, a mystery series for the modern day. Um, so it's really, really good. We've also got Orphans of the Tide by Struan Murray. Um, this is another Scottish book. Um, it tells the story of orphan Ellie Lancaster as she battles to prove the innocence of a young boy who washes up on the shores of her city in the belly of a whale. So that's it, kind of piques your interest, kind of going, wow, <laughs> well, where, where on earth is this gonna, uh, story going to go? It's, it's, it's really, really excellent. But probably one, if you're a fan of the, His Dark Materials or your children have read those before, I would point them towards this one, definitely. We've also got The Explorer by Catherine Rondell there. So that's about um, four children who um, are exploring the Amazon. They're in an airplane and the airplane crashes and they find themselves in the Amazon completely alone. Um, and it's, it's about how, how they overcome that. But they soon quite realise that there's someone been here before. It's not, they've not been the first people to, to land here. Um, and it's the events that unfold after that. So a kind of modern day adventure story. I suppose. So if you have children like The Famous Five, books like that, this is really a good one, good one to point them towards. Uh, Seven Ghosts by Chris Priestley. Um, this is a Barrington Stoke title, so I mentioned Barrington Stoke uh, just previously. Um, and this is about Jake, um, who is, had taken part in a writing competition. Him and these other finalists have been invited to a stately house for a tour. Um, and as the guide leads them through the house and all the hidden nooks and things, they hear the story of seven ghosts who haunt the halls. Um, so this is quite a spooky kind of, not so, not horror I would say, but you know, kind of a kind of chilling spooky text and um, which might appeal to more reluctant readers. And we've also got No Valley Shoes in Syria by Catherine Brutton, which is a lovely, is a wonderful story. It tells the story of Aya, who is a talented ballet dancer who's seeking asylum from the war in Syria with her family. Um, and this, this book's great because it shows the struggles faced by modern day refugees. And we know that that's, you know, even, even today, even this week, this is a, um, a current event that happens. Um, and there's lots of conversations being had about it, um, about them seeking asylum in the UK. But this is from the perspective of the 11 year old girl in the story and um, all the experiences that she's facing, um, which makes it quite an interesting um, perspective. So, I mean, if you, if you see any of these books and think, oh, this might be quite an interesting one for my child, they might quite enjoy it, then you can always use it as a point for conversation as well. Um, what, do you, what do they think it will be about if they have one of these covers uh, and they, they wonder what, what the story could be about just from the cover? Um, are there any they like the look of just from the cover or they dislike how it looks? Are they um, engaged from it in that perspective? If your child is there with you, uh, let us know in the chat if there's any in particular they, they quite like the cover of um, and why, that's always good to know. And it just, yeah, again, starts to spark that conversation um, about reading. So if your child is needing a bit more encouragement rather than initially looking at what books to recommend, then why not try, try sharing stories as a family as well? This is a really lovely way of talking about reading but sharing your own stories as well before you go into other stories and other books sharing stories as a family um, can be really a really great way of um, reigniting your child's reading. Modern life is so busy um, that sometimes it can be hard to, time, to find time to talk as a family just to sit and have a conversation as a, as a family um, for an extended period of time and sharing stories is a really lovely way to bond as a family um, and get to know each other better as well. It's fun to share your experiences um, and sometimes all you need is the right questions to ask. It doesn't need to be complex or um, complicated. Uh, it can be quite simple. So by looking through your life, you might even be able to share some of your hard-won wisdom. Um, know that parents always have lots of hard-won wisdom, so you might be able to share some of that. Um, or encourage a conversation that leads to some inspiration for some books. For example, you might find out that your child is interested about a particular historical figure or historical event just from having a conversation about one of your experiences. Um, 
And there are many texts that are child-friendly and interesting that you can point them towards based on things like that, but lots of non-fiction as well. Uh, one that's really good to point out actually is Little People Big Dreams series. Um, I don't know if, you, if you've come across them before, let us know. Um, they're really great for these as they're really lovely, beautifully illustrated and have an accessible amount of text in them. So they're non-fiction, but they're really accessible for primary school age children. And there's figures that the children might recognise as well. So there's some from history, but there's also ones from the modern day, um, such as Greta Thunberg and David Attenborough. So if your child is really keen on um, nature documentaries, you know, if they really enjoy nature documentaries, they really enjoy animals and things, um, watch David Attenborough's programmes already, then there's a book uh, ready to go um, all about that, that they might, be in, that they might enjoy. Um, and this might also help to encourage them to uh, think about the books that they might like to try reading or ones that they would enjoy, you can point them towards based on their interests. You could also organise a wee family trip quiz based on the Little People Big Dreams series. Um, you could set a, a challenge for each family member to read a couple of the books um, and then pair up to make teams. Uh, grandparents and family members in other households could join too. This is something you can do over video chat over Zoom or something too. Um, I know that people were doing quizzes, <laughs> quizzes a wee while ago over Zoom, so maybe this is one that you could do as a whole family. And then you can base the questions on what can be read or seen in the illustrations of the book as well and make sure the children are really involved um, from that perspective too. Uh, so the stories that you're sharing, you know, about your personal experiences, they don't have to be action-packed or set off in far off places. Um, very few people have those kinds of stories. <laughs> so it's the, the best part of these stories is the kind of personal aspect of them, the kind of normal aspect, the kind of extra, the ordinary, extraordinary in the ordinary, um, as we would call it. And what makes a story interesting is how you felt about what happened. Um, this gives a, your children a chance to really get to know you um, about your personal experiences. And the story doesn't need to be long. Um, your, prob your children will probably ask lots of questions that draw out detail. I'm sure, I'm sure you know, know about that already. Um, so you don't, need to, you don't need to give a lot as part of the story. I'm sure they will ask any follow-up questions that they have. So how best to get started with these kinds of stories and um, taking part in storytelling? Um, you can look through some old photographs. This can help you remember experiences and details that you may have forgotten. And it's helpful to see, set the context with images for your children. You can also try a warm-up game. Sometimes it can be difficult to know what conversations to start with. So dice breakers are a really fun way of getting yourselves used to the types of questions and, that can help to start your story. Um, so for instance, you could have a number on the dice which corresponds with a particular question. Um, and if you don't have dice at home, then you can use apps on your phone. So you can get apps that are just virtual dice or you can set questions and they get randomly selected as well. So whatever suits you. The kind of questions that you could ask, um, for example, could be, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? If you were stranded on a desert island, what three things would you take with you? If you could eat only one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, if you had a superpower, what would it be? And if you could spend the day with one character from a book, who would you pick? Um, so they're quite, you know, quite creative, quite fun questions, but they're really great because it just starts to get the uh, conversation flowing. And try not to be nervous. The sharing of stories is just about you sharing your experiences to, um, with your children. Uh, so it doesn't need to be new and, it, you know, it, it's, just, it's just all about you uh, talking about your experiences. And when you start talking about your stories, uh, you can set the scene by saying where and when it took place, um, who was there, any background details as well. This will help the listener understand the rest of the story as well, it kind of sets in context, um, and share your thoughts and feelings, like how did you feel at the time? Um, how did you feel now sharing the experience? Um, explain what that story means to you and why it's an important memory for you um, and what makes it stick out in your mind um, about what happened. And share what you learned from the experience as well if you learned anything about it. Um, not everything will be a shared experience but if you were taught something do say because um, that's really important. And you could always make this a regular thing to do um, and have a story, family storytelling night each week or after dinner or something you could just make it part of your routine. And even on video chat as we mentioned earlier you know families have been seeing each other a lot more in video chat during lockdown um, this is something that you could do with other family members too and get them to share stories um, if your child or children are not able to see them regularly at the moment. Now you might be wondering um, how you can transfer kind of this shared storytelling idea into further activities. Um, there's lots you can do that will also promote your child's engagement with reading, reading and learning at home. Um, and we've seen families and authors using postcards, especially during lockdown, um, to kind of ensure 
and encourage their children's engagement with reading and writing. Um, it's a really fun way of, of doing that. Here's an, <laughs> here's an example on the slide just from the day the crayons came home by Oliver Jeffers. Um, to set the scene, it's uh, quite a fun postcard, <laughs> this one that the crayon has written um, in the story. So postcards are a really great format for writing tasks as well, for kind of encouraging writing at home, as they're really short, but they can also let the children be creative if they wanted to draw their own illustration on the front. Um, this could be inspired by a story you shared as family that you want to send to a friend or a grandparent, um, or it's a really nice way of recording your stories if you told it home together. So even if you don't want to send a postcard anywhere, you could kind of keep a collection of the postcards um, showing, showing the stories that have been told and shared at home. Um, it's also a really great way of sharing your stories and writing together, but also for staying connected to others if you wanted to send them over to family members, especially if you're not able to see them as regularly at the moment. Postcard stories um, is, an, is an actual activity. It's, um, it's uh, quite a well-known um, activity that authors take part in, um, which encourages children to draw the story on the front of the postcard. So um, you just use postcard templates um, that you can download from uh, online. Just blank ones if you wanted to try this out um, and encourage your child to draw the story like an illustration of what's happening in the story in the front of the postcard as well as the writing on the other side um, making them think really carefully about what event they want to portray um, in their illustration and then they can write the story of what's happening on the other side um, using appropriate language and content in limited space and um, that's why it's such a great task it really encourages uh, children to think about what they're actually going to write um, because obviously they've only got a small space so they need to be quite um, quite concise and there are lots of initiatives that give the opportunity to send postcards to people um, like vulnerable groups and charities and things so if you you know there's one that's postcards of kindness which is an, initi an initiative that sends postcards to nursing homes to cheer up and um, vulnerable groups there so if you wanted to do that if you wanted to kind of go a bit further you could always send your postcards there too and we also have a make your own book resource so if you're quite keen on the postcard idea and you've downloaded a couple of postcard templates and quite enjoyed that we've also got a making your own book resource which your child might enjoy too um, and you can just start with one blank sheet of a4 paper create your own story illustrate it and decorate it to make a special keepsake um, or gift it to a family member as well so that could be inspired by one of the stories that you've told as a family too If your child is more keen on using a digital device in writing, we know that um, obviously like digital devices are um, so much more, they're so kind of more widely used nowadays, especially with children's learning. Um, you can also get them involved in sharing stories that way too, through digital storytelling. Um, and we ran a project, Scotch Book just ran a project with families last year in primary four to seven, so like the upper primary um, age range through the Read Write Count campaign. Um, with digital storing and it, storytelling and it was very positively received by children and parents alike. It's really easy to get involved with and really fun and creative and you can do it together as well which is, which is great. So you can use the stories you've told about your personal experience um, or an experience you've shared together whether that's a family doubt or a hobby. Um, you can plan your ideas together and write a script to follow so that you can read it aloud and record yourselves. You can create drawings to accompany your recording or find photos online that relate to the story you're telling as well. So you can record the stories using a phone or tablet, whatever you have handy, um, and use our digital storytelling resource for support as well. This is free and downloadable for, from our website. So, and you could also share your story with family and friends via social media too. Um, they're usually generally quite short. They're usually only three minutes long. Um, so you can put them together quite quickly and make them really personal to you. So you can use a website such as WeVideo, which is just www.wevideo.com. Um, you can upload your photographs there and attach your voice um, and play around with them, create a slideshow of your photos um, until the pictures and the sound match up to your recording. And as I say, it's a really fun thing to do as a family. Um, and there are lots of simple tutorials on that site as well to help you to create your own digital story if you're needing a little bit more support. And digital stories, to, digital stories sorry, can make a very personal gift for grandparents and family members um, from whom we're socially distanced at the moment. Um, it's, a very special, it's very special for them to hear your voices and to see you having fun and create an important record um, of an experience you, you've had, um, showing you how you're feeling, what you made you laugh, where you were, that kind of thing. Um, it's just really, really wonderful. And it's a really great activity for encouraging that learning at home um, with literacy skills um, while just having fun and, and being creative. 
So now I'm going to show you an example dig digital story, um, which is by Amy Mason. Um, it's all about her uncovering her fears. Um, let me just share one second. I will have to do a new share. And then we can show you uh, Amy's video, which is, it's all about her discovering her, uh, overcoming her fears, I should say. One second, and I'll just get the link up for you. So if I do a new share, now I should be able to show you that there. This summer I went to an, an outdoor centre in Adam with my local youth club. To get there we had to get the ferry. It was a two hour boat ride. When we got there, when we got to Aaron, the bus was waiting for, the bus was waiting for us. We got to our rooms and started unpacking. I was in a room with three of my friends, Katie, Ellie and Anya. On the first day we went climbing in caves. It was fun. After that we went abseiling. It looked fun but scary. At the time I didn't want to do it. I started crying. I have a terrible fear of heights. Even going up the stairs at school, it scares me. The abseiling instructor persuaded me to give it a try. I made my way to the top of the cliff. It was 75 foot to the bottom. I looked down. It was the worst idea I'd ever had. My heart was beating hard, but I was, I was also excited. I went over the edge and started going down. I got into a rhythm, rhythm and keep, kept on going. It started to become fun. I didn't look down again until I got to the bottom. When I got to the bottom, I looked up. I felt very proud of myself that I had made it to the bottom. I'm still scared of heights though. So yeah, that's, uh, that's just an example of a digital story. And this was one from our uh, digital storytelling project with the Story Bird Project in North Ayrshire. Um, and just gives you an example of the type of um, the yeah the types of digital stories that you can do and it's um, really simple you know that's that's just um, Amy talking about um, a school trip that she had and how she overcame her fears of heights and um, through one of those activities so it can really be whatever suits you whatever story suits you if you want to but yeah like if you if you have something a similar experience um, or something you did that was quite fun or a holiday or um, it can be anything you want that you want to um, record and as you can see she also did like a slideshow of the photos from her school trip too um, and then just had recorded her voice over the top um, so it can be whatever suits you if you have photos then you can use them or if you want to use drawings that your child's done as well to accompany the story then you can do that too it can be totally flexible um, and it's really easy to do but there it's a really great way of just engaging your child through a digital activity that's related to reading as well Oh, someone's just asking if um, wevideo.com is free. I believe it is, yes. Um, so you should be able to access no problem. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Um, oh, it does cost. Um, so you can also use um, just iMovie um, on, your, on your iPhone. If you've got an iPhone or an, a, a smartphone, um, you can just use one of those apps too. Um, but also in the digital storytelling uh, resource that we have on our website, uh, that will give you lots of links to other... Um, other websites that you can use as well. So I hope you I hope you enjoyed the video um, and it helps to get you to start thinking about some of the ideas and um, for the kinds of activities that you can do with stories. Um, digital storytelling is a really great format especially because it encourages you to complete the process together so it's very much um, a partnership between you and your child. Um, it can be tailored to whatever story you want to tell and how you want to tell it. If you do end up creating a digital story together, then make sure you do share it with us. Um, we'd love to see what you get up to. Um, we always love uh, seeing digital stories that uh, families are doing. 
Um, but another good example I wanted to highlight to you, um, using digital to reignite your child's reading is creating book trailers as well, which is um, a really fun activity. And if you like the idea of digital storytelling, you could also encourage your child to try out this digital activity um, with book trailers. We have, an, we have a guide as well for putting together a book trailer or book review video on our website, um, which provides examples and filmmaking tips. And this was created in partnership with Into Film. You can use a story you've shared for inspiration or reflect on a book that your child's really enjoyed or maybe disliked previously. Um, and in doing so, you're encouraging your child to think about why they'd like to dislike that particular book, um, which is really useful for thinking about books to point them towards in the future. Um, and also just talking about a book they really liked can really help them remember why they liked reading in the past as well. So they've had a bit of a tail off in their reading um, and you go back to reflecting on a particular book they enjoyed, it might kind of reignite that engagement that they had before um, and rediscover that, that love of reading that they, that they used to have. The skills developed from just developing, like using these kind of digital activities will help your child to express themselves efficiently on camera and they can be used to demonstrate their learning at home as well. Um, it's an al another alternative method for presenting their learning beyond writing. You could always do a comic strip or a storyboard as well if they're um, wanting something that's not just a digital activity. Um, we've got a video on um, our website from Malky Duff, who's a storyboarder and comic writer, um, which is designed for primary school children and it kind of leads them through the whole pr process of creating a comic. Um, so there's that there too if you were interested. And alternatively, you can just share the stories aloud with the example activities we mentioned earlier too. That's a really good way of encouraging talking and listening skills that are so important for, for literacy. And it's really important, you know, when we're, you know, sharing, we're talking about sharing stories, um, but also encouraging your child to read aloud to you or you to them and, and to do so together is, is so important. You could take turns to read a page or a chapter um, and ask questions about what they think will happen next how the character might be feeling, um, why they thought the event unfolded how it did. You could also encourage them to share your point of view with, you could encourage them to share your, their point of view with you, sorry, um, and share yours too, let them know what you think as well. Reading aloud is so important for so many different skills and it's also important to do even if your child has started to read independently because it will help you to find other books that they might enjoy and create really meaningful reading experiences like we mentioned earlier. And don't be afraid to reread books as well. If there's a book that you really enjoy or a book your child really enjoys reading aloud, just don't be afraid to go back to it. Um, that's always really important. There's always opportunities to take away new learning from a book as well, whether that's rereading it from a different character's perspective, writing about what would happen after the story ends, or summarising the book to make it sound as exciting as possible for another family member. Um, one of the most other, one of these other activities you can do um, digitally um, and it's a really inspiring way to get your child to engage with reading and writing more is by watching an author event. Um, we have a programme that's filled with author events. It's called BBC Authors Live and it's in its 10th year this year. So it's been running, it's been running for 10 years solidly. Um, and so that means we've got so many amazing author events available for you to watch back if you're interested. Um, they are broadcast by the BBC and there are events for all age groups. Um, and this is a really good way to put a focus on reading at home um, just, just, through, just through an event and it's also available to watch an iPlayer as well. They've been, BBC Scotland have been showing some of these broadcasts throughout lockdown to support learning at home as well so you should be able to watch them back on iPlayer too um, if you don't want to go through our, our website. We have a variety of on-demand events which are um, tailored for children aged 9 to 11 from Frank Cottrell Boyce who's in the picture um, to Anthony Horowitz and Cressida Cowell so there's a range of authors um, to choose from. And also you could use this as inspiration for like a wee family film night and um, all the broadcasts are 40 minutes long so they should um, keep your children engaged um, for that period. You could make snacks and um, encourage your child to pick an author and uh, maybe one that they've recognised or they've, for one they've had books um, they once they've done books that they've enjoyed um, and afterwards you can discuss what they liked about it and what they'd like to do or watch next and um, it's a really really lovely way of um, just getting them to talk about reading in that way as well. And there's also linked activities for each event as well. So if you're keen on doing like a, using them as a launch pad for something else, then we have activities ready to go that could be um, used for inspiration. You can also use our website. Um, I've mentioned some of the things you can find on our website already, but there are so many different activity ideas and inspiration for learning at home there too. 
We've got our Home Activities Hub, which is designed specifically for parents and families, which is regularly updated with ideas for fun learning opportunities at home. So make sure and um, check that out if uh, you're interested. And we also have some book lists and recommendations um, on a variety of themes. There's ones that are for on STEM or for ones that are maybe for children who are a bit more reluctant to read. So these are all um, available to access as well. And you can sign up for our family's newsletter as well, um, which will send you all the information about our events and resources that are being added, um, which are perfect for families. I did mention um, Barrington Stoke before, um, which uh, with a couple of the titles that we mentioned earlier. Um, this is their website is really, really great as well for uh, finding a variety of titles or other quick reads that your children might be interested in. Um, but also be open to trying different types of books with your child if they're not if they're not very keen on a particular genre why not try a new one or, or some short stories um, all reading is good reading I know we mentioned that at the start but it's really important to emphasize it um, and there are books to suit every taste and interest and remember that the right book is out there I know it might seem sometimes if you're um, really struggling to find something that your child engages with it can be it can be quite tough but and um, there will be something out there for them that they will they will really enjoy whether it's a graphic novel or non-fiction, um, choose your own adventure books, um, how-to books or something else. Uh, there really is something for everyone in the world of books. It's just um, trying to navigate that. Um, and be patient, don't force it. You'll find something that interests them. Um, and there are lots of great places to start looking as well if you're um, interested. So I've mentioned the Love Reading for Kids website there, um, which is a really great website, which includes um, the first chapter of a lot of different books there. So if you're wanting to try out some titles like that your child likes to look of, they can read the first chapter for free on there and get a flavour of the, if they might like the book or not. So they can try the first chapter and if they go, oh, I really want to keep reading, then it means you, you can go to the, like, request a copy at the library or order um, a copy from the bookshop. But then it also means if they're not that keen on it, then you've not gone to the effort of <laughs> getting that book for them um, and, they've, and they've maybe not really enjoyed it. So that's a really great one to, to look at as well. There's also um, World Book Day website does really great um, things for parents as well. They have like a, a book finder for parents, um, which is really, uh, really good. I would recommend you have a look at that. And Common Sense Media as well. That's a really great website for, um, which has got lots of resources for parents as well. So if you have any questions, um, I'd love to just take some time to answer them just now. So please feel free to just pop them in the chat um, and I'll get back to you. Um, also, please feel free to keep in touch or let me know if you have any questions about our programmes in the future. Um, I'm also on Twitter. There's my Twitter handle. So if you want to connect with me there too, you can find me there as well. Um, so yeah, as I say, I'll just wait a couple of minutes just now um, and see if we have any questions in the chat. Ah, yes, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, apologies. I, I didn't realise that weavideo.com was, um, was not free. Um, but uh, yeah, as I say, if you have a look at our digital storytelling resource or use iMovie, as I say, um, on your phone, on your smartphone, you can, you can use that too. But a digital storytelling resource has um, lots of links to um, other websites that might, you might find helpful if you're wanting to give digital storytelling a try. Uh, so I didn't see that earlier, someone was saying that um, they've always been trying to get their son to read a book where he could quite happily read football magazines. Yeah, I think there is that perception that we have to read, they should be reading books, like physical books. Um, but yeah, if they're quite happy reading football magazines, that's still reading, that is really, really good. Um, so, and yeah, Overline is great. Um, I definitely recommend that and the uh, Phil Errol book. Sorry, I'll just double check um, what that one was called because it's quite a quick read too. The Tom Palmer one and Phil Errol one. Um, are quite good because they are quite quick reads. So um, they'll knock you living, that's what it's called, sorry. Um, so they're both books about football, but quite different. Um, so, you know, Tom Palmer's is set during World War One, and Phil Errol's is more of a kind of comedy uh, style uh, football story. Um, but they're both great. They're both quick reads. They're both um, really good if, you're, if your child's into football um, and a really good place to start if you're kind of interested in bridging that between magazines, for instance, and maybe longer books, and um, they're really, really great to go for. Yeah, there just doesn't seem to be any other questions in the chat, but um, as I say, if you want to send anything over to me over email, that's my email address there, so please feel free to um, get in touch if you'd like to. 
Um, and just thank you so much for coming on to this session today. I hope it was interesting and you've been able to take away some ideas um, to get started to reignite your child's reading. Um, and I hope the, uh, the return to school goes well this week um, for anyone that have got their kids starting back uh, next week. Oh, sorry, I just need to. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and goodbye. Speak to you soon. <laughs>